Hello, this is Walter Jackson. I'm going to show you a little bit right now about how to set up a digital dashboard using Microsoft Excel and VBA using a user form. Here's a small user form that I've built to allow me to look into my data. What I'm looking at is bogus data that I've typed in for various modes of transportation, those being automobile, bus travel, train travel, taxi use, and walking. Something that you may have noticed while I clicked on the different areas in this list box on the different items is that that data updates instantaneously, relatively instantaneously, to show me the information that I want to use for that item that I've selected. You'll notice that there's a chart up here that gives me a chronological history of the use of a particular mode of transportation for the city, the state, and the national region over several years from 2004 through 2009. The next chart is a frequency distribution diagram that shows essentially how frequently a piece of uh, a mode of transportation is being used. And then there's a list that includes the top five states for prevalence of use of a particular mode of transportation, the bottom five, and the national average. And then here's a chart that shows the same thing, the top five, the bottom five, and the national average. You just see them graphically. So notice once again that as I select items from this list box, I can update all of those items simultaneously from the data that I've got downloaded into the spreadsheet. How does that work? We've been working on a tab called Dashboard. We'll go to another tab or another worksheet called Control. And in the Control worksheet, I have several ranges of data and also three other copies of these charts. The two ranges in yellow are the actual data that we're using to generate all of these charts. The first one generated that chronological history. You remember that we saw data for city, state, and national values. Here they are right here for several years, 2004 through 2009. And you see that down here in the X range, the uh, X axis of this chart and we're looking at the values for automobile. And notice that the title of the chart has been updated both in the main title and also along the y-axis. Now if I select a different index, a different item in this list box, you'll see that all of those charts are updating. How does that work? That works because if you look at the data ranges for these charts, the data range for this chart being over here, the data range for the frequency distribution diagram being over here, the data for the top five and the bottom five being right here. If we look into these various data ranges, they all use the index function into the data ranges that I've downloaded by the queries. So what they do is they selectively pull out exactly the data that I want to look at based on the list index that I've selected from the list box. Now you'll see for the chronological data, for example, if I look at the cell right here, and first of all, if I look at the range cron data, when I refer to the range cron data, this is the chronological data. And there's another range that I use, which is right here. And let me see if I can figure out the name of that. Okay, that's another range. Okay, that's mode data. So when I refer to mode data, this is referring to this array of data right here. Now if you look at this cell, examine the cell formula very carefully, it indexes into the cron data chart using row number index val times 5 plus 2. Now if 0, if the index val is 0, multiply it by 5, that's still 0, plus 2, that gives us row 2, and then column 2. Okay, you can see the cell formula uh, specifications are right here. So using the index, use a data range, use a row number, and then use a column number. So I'm going into the cron data range, and I'm going into row 2, column 2, because that's a 0. So what's the second row? That would be down here, and that would be the second column, and that's going to return a value of 86. So you see a value of 86 here, and a value of 86 down here, or 86.7 exactly. So that you'll notice 86.7, 80.0, 76.0, those three values are right down here because I've specified 
the zeroth item in that list box, or the very first item, okay, remember the first item is going to return a zero list index. So if I switch to the next item, if I want to look at data for buses, now there's a one in here. If I have trains, we'll put a two in there, etc. But with buses, a one in there, now look what values are in here, an eight, a 16, and a 14, which correspond to these three values right here. So whatever I select out of here, the appropriate data is going to be pulled from the cron data array into the source data for this chart over here. Similarly, uh, th that works the same way with the frequency distribution data. Now what I have done to generate the frequency distribution table is use frequency distribution uh, cell formula. Remember that is an array formula that operates against this table up here. So these buckets say, give me the frequency distribution for this list of values right here. So you can see the cell formula uh, equals frequency S35 to S90, which takes these values right here and then uses these buckets right here to sort out the values of how many values go into each one of the buckets. Because I've used frequency distribution for all five of these columns, then what happens is, again, I can use the index function to specify which array of frequency distributions or the frequency distribution more specifically for the right mode of travel that I'm specifying based on this list index again. So for example, if I want a frequency distribution for trains, I select trains, that gives me an index value of two. This is going to be, remember that corresponds with a zero, a one, and a two. Well, guess what? That's the frequency distribution for train travel. And you'll notice that these values under train are the same values that are now in here because I've inserted a two into this function call where index val is. And essentially there you have it. You have a method for synchronizing all of these charts and all of your data simultaneously. The important part to remember is when you query out that data in one way or another, you have to query out all of those indicators in the same order. For example, automobiles, bus, train, taxi, walking are all queried out in that sequence in this array and also here, automobile, bus, train, taxi, and walking over here. So because they're in the same order, once we get ultimately to our dashboard, we can pull that data out and see it exactly the way that we want to see it, which is uh, actually very powerful a tool to put in your toolbox. I hope this has helped you to figure out how to build a digital dashboard. I can go into a little bit more detail. Now, what is happening? How do you put that value onto the form? How do you take the, the value for the list box indicator and stick it onto the control form? That's actually pretty easy. I'll go into VBA and I'll look at the main form. What we'll do is we'll double click on that list box which takes us to the click event of that control. And the main functional line in here is this line right here that says the control worksheets range index vals value is going to be the list index property of the list box index. Okay, so in other words, we're taking the value generated from that list box and we're putting it in this cell right here. And that's all that does. One other thing that we do is we have to sort that data. And remember to give us the top five and the bottom five, we have to have all of that data sorted. So I have a routine in here, which is in the code module, that performs the sort of that array of data. So what we're doing is we're sorting this data based on which mode of transportation that we've selected. So if I fire up that list box or that user form again, and we go to the control tab, notice that the data right now is sorted by automobile. If we want to sort it by bus, we'll select bus on the list box. And you notice that you've got, we're going to sort it descending. You notice you've got 0 0.5 and 1.2 at the top. When we select bus, now the data is sorted by bus, and it's sorted everything else in the table as well. And now it's sorted descending, 56.2, 38.0, etc. And those values correspond right down here. 
So we've done uh, basically two things with this list box. We updated this value on the form so that all the index functions will now pull the right data out of the appropriate arrays. And then we've sorted this data so that this chart that shows the top five and the bottom five is going to be sorted correctly. And then other than that, you're pretty much on your way to building yourself a nice little digital dashboard to look through all your data graphically. I hope that helps. Have a good day. If you have questions, you can email me at jacq2 at cox.net. Thank you very much.